Amen, man. I'm, 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 uh, I'm excited to be here this morning. I like Father's Day. I was, uh, it's kind of funny because you think about Father's Day and you think like, hey, you know, what did, you know, what did dads really like? And sometimes I think, you know, dads, if they would be honest, that they would say like, you know, I'll, I just want to watch a movie. You know, like what if we came to church and we just showed a movie? <laughs> all, all the moms are like, why? You're at church and dads are like, that'd be awesome. Not to have to listen to you again, watching a movie, Tombstone or Gladiator or one of those other R-rated movies we're not supposed to watch, right? But anyway, I didn't come to tell you about my movies and favorite movies and stuff, so uh, I actually came to tell you some jokes, because I know it's been a while since I did some movies. <laughs> Y'all should see my wife's face. It's, she's like, I wish I'd never married that man. She hates my jokes which makes me want to tell them even more. But, you know, so you got doors on stage, and that's the perfect setup to one of my favorite kind of jokes, which are what? Knock-knock jokes, right? Uh, so, so I'll just give you all a few just to see, loosen you up a little bit, because you seem very, very serious this morning, and I don't want you to be that serious. So knock-knock. Uh, a cow says, no. A cow says, moo. <laughs> Huh? Is it a hook? You love it? Here we go. All right. Knock, knock. A little old lady. Y'all didn't know you could yodel, did you? Now let's do it just for the people on camera. Do, do it like you're now. If I say a little old lady, a little old. See, look at y'all. I taught y'all how to yodel at church this morning. You have a new skill to go out and bless the world with. So when you go to lunch or whatever you do, make sure you yodel. And if you didn't know how, now you know, all right? Well, I didn't want to mess that up, so I'm going to stop, okay? Because my other jokes were rather immature and male-oriented and probably don't need to be used as a device of torture. So we're going to continue our series this morning. We were talking about... Uh, we've been talking about doors, obviously. You know, we have some, some doors here as props, but God uses doors for so many different things. And when we think about doors, you know, if, we, if we think about doors, a lot of times it has to do with, you know, th doors that are open to us or doors that are closed to us. But, but a lot of times doors just mean more than that. You know, when we read in the scripture, uh, it's not doesn't talk about doors uh, all the time, but when it does, it it often talks about this uh, being able to go in or come out. It talks uses doors kind of as as boundaries and opportunities and stuff like that. And last week we talked about how God can just open doors for us, how amazingly uh, he steps in and how he can, he can create an opening where it didn't even look like it was there before. We talked about David and how David was just a shepherd boy, kind of unknown out there with the sheep, and yet God created these, uh, these, this, this series of events where next thing you know, David goes from shepherd to king. And, and, and it doesn't mean that all of us are going to be kings slash queens, if you're, if you're a lady here. It's, it's, not, it's not just that, but it's, it, it is the fact that God knows what he's put in you and I, and he wants to develop, and he'll open doors to do that. And every time that, that, that you see God going forward to create an opportunity, you'll see the fact that you have a spiritual enemy that's trying to rob you of that opportunity, trying to use all kinds of different uh, means and methods to get you off track. And I want to I follow last week's message up because it's one thing to know that God opens doors. That is a true statement. The other part and the harder part is, is to figure out when a door opens, is that the right door? That's where we struggle, right? We can all rally, but oh yeah, the Lord opens doors that uh, no man can close and closes doors that no man can open. But where we spend the bulk of our energy is trying to figure out whose door is it anyway. What's at the door? Because we get a little fearful, don't we? We, get, we start thinking about, why well, I went through, that, through a door like that one time and such and such happened. It, would, it wasn't pleasant or it didn't work or whatever. And so we get kind of gun shy about taking risk and taking opportunity. And I want to show you a little bit, uh, one of the best ways to understand how to realize whether it's a God open door or whether it's a distraction door or whether it's a temptation door uh, is to know how the enemy of your soul works, how the strategy of the devil himself, how he'll use things to 
uh, remember, very rarely, you know, we always have this picture of the enemy about how he's, you know, red and got horns and a tail. Uh, the reality is, is, is that uh, Scripture says he'll appear as an angel of light. It'll look beautiful. It'll look great. But it'll be a perversion of what is actually real. And so the enemy doesn't outright lie so much as he does create something that looks similar to what God would make. But there's always just this stink to it. You know what I mean? If you learn to recognize it, uh, you'll figure it out and you'll be able to avoid some of the pitfalls. And so I want to talk a little bit about that today in the context of these open doors. How do we realize which invitation to a door is legit and which invitations we can kind of go, oh, I better watch out for that one. Amen? So let's pray and then we will jump into some scripture. Lord, I thank you uh, that you do open doors for us. I thank you you're the God of opportunity. I thank you that you've put purpose and plan in each one of us, God, and that those plans are good. They're for us to prosper. And so, Father, I pray that you'd give us wisdom. God, pour it out on us like rain today. God, let us receive it. Lord, let us see in your word what you want us to see. Holy Spirit, we pray that you'll teach us, God, that you'll, you'll use what we learn today, the time that we spend, to do something greater in us than what it seems like should happen. God, dispense revelation to your people, I pray this morning, through your word, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to share out of Proverbs, which uh, my Father's Day gift to you fathers, uh, a guy gave to me this gift many years ago, and this will be my gift to you. As, as a father, you're going to face a lot of challenges, right? This is totally separate from the message, but it just hit me when I said the word Proverbs. Um, you're going to face a lot of stuff, and you're going to need some wisdom. So if you're a father, or you ever plan on being a father, or you're a human being, either one, if you will open up Proverbs every day, it's really easy, because I know y'all are like me, and you're going to miss a day, right? And you go, I can't remember where I was. Well, just remember this. If it's the third of the month, read the third one. If it's the fifth of the month, read the fifth one. And if you missed, you didn't even read it up until the 11th, it's okay. Just start with Proverbs 11. There's 31 chapters in Proverbs, and all of them are all about wisdom and understanding and insight. And if you read them, you will be helped, right, uh, every day. And this is something you can do. Uh, I don't even count it anymore as a Bible verse because I just, it's, just, it's just food. This is one of the best books. And so uh, there you go. Happy Father's Day. Don't say I didn't give you nothing. Read Proverbs every day. All right? Uh, here we go, uh, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13 through 18. A woman named Folly is brash. She's ignorant and doesn't know it. She sits in her doorway on the heights overlooking the city. She calls out to men going by who are minding their own business. Come in with me, she urges the simple, those who lack good judgment. She says, stolen water is refreshing. Food eaten in secret tastes the best. But little do they know that the dead are there, her guests are in the depths of the grave. And so when we read Proverbs, we see these beautiful, I mean, uh, amazing pictures painted by, uh, by the author who shows us in so many different cases where uh, everyday life, we kind of see how, how these things work. And so he says, he lays this out to us, and this, by the way, follows a chapter on wisdom. So there's a lady wisdom, and there's a lady folly. There's, there's, there's a foolishness that's depicted as a lady and a wisdom that's depicted as a lady. And when he talks about this lady folly, first of all, it says she's brash. In other words, she's loud. She's, she's out there. She's sitting, it says, uh, on her doorway, in her doorway on, at the heights of the city. For you and I, this would be she's sitting on her stoop on Main Street. She's sitting at the door where everybody's hanging out, everybody's passing by, and she calls out, the scriptures say, to men going by who are minding their own business. Now picture this. You gotta use your you gotta, you know, turn on the, the imagination station in your mind a little bit if you're gonna get what God's trying to show us here this morning. And that is this that that you and I, we go through our life for the most part, minding our own business. We're not really geared and we're probably either a, a true exception of a person or we're telling ourselves a lie if we think that we're always minded on the things of God, if we're always got our mind on other people. Listen, we are, we are just sort of um, 
the way we're made, we're going to think about ourselves. We're going to be minding our own business, going along, tending to ourselves in our own mind. And so think about how you're just going through your day every day, minding your own business, walking by. And yet there's a, a, a lady, so to speak, in this term saying, hey, hey, come here. I was at the laundromat the other day doing my laundry. And this guy, he, uh, I'm walking by, he's, he kind of looked a little sketchy. Anyway, but uh, as I was going uh, past the washing machines, he said, uh, uh, hey, 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 man, uh, you look like a cool guy, which that confirmed he was sketchy, right? <laughs> I don't know about you. No one looks cool at the laundromat, right? <laughs> I don't. I'm all in my, my way big gym shorts. Oh, she said, yeah, yeah. My wife said, yeah, you do. You look sexy at the laundromat doing laundry. <laughs> no, man, that's the best a man can look, ain't it? No matter what you're wearing. So anyway, I'm like, this cat's sketchy. He tries to sell me. Uh, he, he tells me that, that I, I obviously, he said, you being a handsome man and all, you obviously got a lady. I said, yeah. He said, let me show you something. So he does, literally does the whole, pulls his jacket open, <laughs> reaches in, grabs a box. He said, let me show you. And he opens it up, and it literally looks like your junk drawer. But, but it's just full of gold stuff. He said, I know you'd like one of these for your lady. I was like, yes, but no. Right? I was, and so I laugh. I go to the laundromat where it, it takes a little card. The machine, you don't use cash. It takes a little card. I told him, I said, well, do you take this? He said, no, man, just cash. I was like, oh, sorry, dude. Debit? He said, no. So I'm oh, sorry, man. I'm out, you know. Anyway, there's this certain, like, there, you know, when you think about what the scriptures say, and I'm, I'm using that story to say that there's sometimes that, 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 that someone will call out to you, and you'll kind of know it's sketchy, right? Hey, 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 come here, man. You look like a cool guy. Hey, pretty lady, let me have a word with you. Uh, hey, do you got a second? I need some help, right? All these different things that, that, that will call out to you, and that's kind of how folly calls out to us. Always flattering. Always, hey, come here. Hey, hey, come here. I notice you. Out of all these people, hey, I see you. Hey, come here. Let me have a word with you. Let me borrow your ear. And yet folly, it says, urges the simple. Now, simple seems to me to be an old word for stupid, right? Uh, not all there, not paying attention. Could be naive, though. And I think in most cases, that's where it really, it really catches because we would say, well, folly can call out to me all she wants to because I am not simple. But the truth of the matter is, is that, is that, you know, we become foolish when we think we're wise. And we become foolish when we think we're above the snares of the enemy. We become foolish when we think that it's in our own strength that we avoid all these snares and all these traps and all this calling out to. And so we have to understand that when, when this is saying simple, it's not an, the scripture is not insulting to us. This is not to insult us. It's just saying that, look, there are times when you're going to be naive, when you're going to be tired, when your mind's going to be on other things. And that is when folly is going to say, hey, to you, hey, come here. Hey. I got something for you, cool guy in the laundromat. Stolen water is refreshing. Hmm. Food eaten in secret tastes the best. Think about this. Stolen things and secret things. You see, when you and I are approaching things and we're walking by a door and Folly calls out to us and says, hey, hey, come on in here with me. Automatically, you and I need to know that God doesn't invite us into stolen things and secret things. What God offers us is, is offered to everyone. God doesn't offer me something that he doesn't offer to, to you. God doesn't offer to any big name person in the faith something that he doesn't offer me. He's not a respecter of persons. Now, there is a secret place in God that we can venture into, but it's in him. It's not secret from everybody else because we can all get there. Amen. And so when we begin to recognize the call of the folly, the lady folly, then we need to understand that these are traps that the enemy sets to get you to go indoors so that you don't go in the next door. 
Think of it this way. If I'm walking down this street and I'm, I'm, I'm walking around and God wants me to go in the blue door, but yet right here sits folly. Hey, hey, come here with me. And I start entertaining that, then I will be robbed of the blessing that I would have if I were wise and avoided that door. Amen? So here's what I'm saying. God's going to open doors for you, but the enemy's going to set another trap that's going to look like the door that God has opened for you. You see how this works? See, it would be nice if everything was just good and evil. Just simple black hats, white hats, good guys, bad guys. Uh, you know, God's, you know, grandpa looking white robe and shiny and the devil's a little red, you know, red suited crazy. It's never that simple. It's never that simple because the enemy doesn't even mind offering you something good if it robs you of the great thing that God has for you. Amen. And so you and I need to understand that, look, it's not always going to look horrible. That's why it's so important for us to understand that God has a plan for us and we got to stay in tune with him. We got to stay right on track with him. We have to listen. We have to pay attention. We have to have the word in us. We have, you know, we talked about the Holy Spirit about a month ago and, and this is where it really kicks in. We need to hear the voice of God, the counsel of God from the counselor that God sent after Jesus ascended into heaven so that we can understand how does God want me to live? He didn't leave it for you and I to figure it out. He gave his Holy Spirit to us so that we could just follow his voice. And, and you and I have to understand that, you know what? Uh, for us to think that we're not going to fall for the Lady Folly's invitation is foolishness. Okay? Uh, I'm pretty sure if I were to say raise your hand if you've ever fallen for that nonsense, a lot of hands would go up. Mine first. Not only have I fallen for it, I've argued for it. I fought for it. I thought it was the best thing going, right? I was the, I was the guy. I was saying that. But, it, but listen, because stolen water is sweet, isn't it? Isn't the easy thing nice? Don't you love it when something just falls in your lap? I was talking to my son the other day. This was kind of funny because this is how, uh, when I say how, when, when, when the scripture talks about simple, my son's not simple. He's a smart young guy. Many of you know him. Uh, he's, but but he's, he is naive to a degree, right? And so he says, I, he starts playing me music on his phone. And he's got this app that is a paid app that lets you listen to music on your phone. And I say to him, are you paying for that app? And he says, well, yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah. Either you pay or you don't pay. There's no well, yeah. He said, well, I put in my card and I have access to the app, but they don't ever charge my card. I said, oh. He goes, isn't that cool? And I said, oh, yeah, that is cool. Until they realize it and you've been using it for and now all of a sudden, instead of paying $7 a month, now you owe them like $90. And, you know, when you're working in restaurants and stuff and, and your minimum wage, $90 is quite a hit, right? So I had to explain to him that, listen, this is perfect example of these, these stolen waters are refreshing. These stolen, it seems like it's easy. It seems like it's free. But listen, it will always, always, always come back and get you. It will always hit you in the end and it will be bitter. Where he wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind paying, I pay, I pay for an app that I get to listen to music. I love it. I listen to it. I pay it. But what I pay per month, if they charge me a year at a time, I'd be like, it ain't worth it. Right? Because it's easy for me to give up $9 a month. I sure don't want, I sure don't want to give up $110 just for music. That's robbery. But, but it feels better once a month, right? And so when I tell him that, I say, hey, so you have to understand that these things are always going to come back to get you. And you don't want to get into this point where these stolen waters, this easy thing that seems like you're getting it, but you're not paying for it. There is nothing free. Bar salvation. Right. And the only reason it's free is because Jesus paid for it. OK, it's just free to you and me. That's why it's the one thing that is hard for us to grab, because we really do know that things aren't free. What else does she say? Food eaten in secret tastes best. Now, I know y'all. I even seen some of y'all. Some of the best Taco Bell that I eat 
is in that parking lot behind it by myself. I seen y'all out there in my truck <laughs> acting like my windows are painted black, air conditioner on, radio going. <sighs> Boy, food eating in secret. I ain't got to talk to nobody. I can have stuff running down my face. My wife ain't telling me. Oh, man, I just can do it all, you know, right? And you think about it, some of y'all are like, oh, my gosh, does he really see me out there? Yes. <laughs> I've eaten my share of burritos. No, I'm saying, but you think about this. The things that we do in secret we think are, are sweet. The things that we do that we think are hidden are sweet. The things that we do that we think other people don't see are sweet. And the reality is, is it is. I mean, the Scripture's not lying when it talks about how, how uh, sin feels rewarding for a time, right? And, and what is done in secret, understand, uh, isn't always, you know, I mean, eating a burrito in secret, just wanting to be away from people, there ain't nothing wrong with that. So that's kind of me making light of it. But the reality is, if, if, if I'd be embarrassed if somebody saw me eating it, now it's a problem, right? Uh, if, if what I'm doing, if, if other people see it, and, and, and I feel, um, and I feel, my conscious, uh, my, what is it, my conscience uh, kind of grips me, then I know that I don't need to do that. I know that, that, that there's something wrong with that. And we need to be very tender about that. We need to understand that the things that we do in secret, that, that, if, that if the Holy Spirit is saying, you know, you don't need to do that, as silly as whatever it is might be, or as serious as whatever it is might be, it is best for us to just listen to that. Because if not, here's what happens. We find ourselves just literally walking in the door with Lady Folly. We, we, we are knowingly just marching in. Hey, what you got in there? I have stolen water, and I have food that you can eat in secret. I have things that please you and are good to you, but they're stolen and they're secret. If the enemy ever pre presents you with an opportunity, with an open door, it will probably not look brazenly, uh, uh, it, it won't look so clear that it's stolen. It won't look so clear that it's, that it's uh, secret or forbidden. But the truth is that if you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will show you and give you wisdom about, uh, hey, hold on a second, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and meddle a little bit just a little, because I think it's important that we understand this stuff. When you steal something, uh, you're stealing. Can we just be clear about that? So when you steal everything from digital music to computer stuff, whatever, that's still theft, right? That, and that's a hard thing. People get mad about that, right? But it's true. Somebody took the time to make that and make it available, but you're going to take it for free. That's still stealing. It'd be the same thing if I whittled you a little train track, you know, out of wood, and I sold you that good. You paid for it and took it home. But if you took that, you'd steal it. But we don't think we're stealing when we do things that are unseen, when we think things are un done in secret. And the reality is, 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 is you, have to, we, you and I have to be clear about that. Why? Because when we uh, do things that are like that, we are numbing our conscience to it. We're, we're dulling ourselves down, and we're, we're sort of spending time with Lady Folly versus Lady Wisdom, Right? And so, so keep yourself sharp. Be ridiculous, people, about, about your integrity. Be ridiculous, people, about, uh, about how you see things because it's easy, and it's, it's not even a slippery slope. It is a straight-down slope. When you begin to make exceptions, you'll always begin to make more exceptions, and Lady Folly knows that, so she just offers you something like a stolen, a stolen drink of water, right? This is, this is sweet. Well, yeah, so is water that I paid for, right? Does it make sense? And so you and I are presented opportunities, open doors by the Lord that are, that are good and pure, and you're probably going to have to work for some for it. The other part is, is the enemy will open doors that will make it seem really easy. This door is open. You'll get very close to the same thing, and it's good, and we can fall into a trap that robs us of our great thing that God has us by offering us something that's just good. Amen? So knowing this, we need to understand another thing, and that's this. Here's a warning in, an, in another uh, part, of the proverb, part of Proverbs 26, 11. Check this out. It says, a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool repeats his foolishness. And it's, been, it's interesting to me how we can always go back 
You know, I have things in my life that I wonder, why do I go back to that? Why do I always default to foolishness in this area? What's wrong with me? How come I keep doing it? Because it's one thing, you know, how come people don't become addicted to shocking themselves with electricity? You know what I mean? How come I don't always forget that that's going to hurt and grab a live wire? I don't do that. But, man, I always go back to ice cream. You know, can't, can't seem to break that one. That's right. I always go back to the thing that, 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 that there's just things that I know that I need to stay away from that I just, I, I'm like a dog going back to it. it just, when, and you think about that. Well, that's gross, man. Why are you talking about dogs returning to their vomit? When you, when you see a dog do that, what's wrong with you, dog? Right? You don't even want to own that dog. When my dog does stupid stuff like that, I'm like, well, I should have got a smart dog. Not you. Look at you. You got food, and here you are. Going back, that's gross. And it's kind of like how it is with us. We tend to get in these cycles of foolishness where we keep going through that door, we keep going to Lady Folly, and we keep going back. And it gets frustrating to us because a lot of us, this is the cycle of everything from addiction this is the cycle of, of, of bad thinking, um, you know, the way that we approach things. I have to make sure of myself, this is just me playing a little bit of confession here, I have to constantly keep my guard up uh, about pessimism. It's easy for me to be pessimistic. Because you know what they say about pessimistic people, right? They're usually right. But optimistic people are usually happy, so I'd rather be happy than right, you know. And so, so, so it's easy to point out and see the fault and the wrong and everything and how it's never going to work and all that stuff. I have to fight that, and I know that, and I keep my guard up about that. But there's other things in my life that, that, that I, don't, I, I seem to not be able to get that. Like, it doesn't sink in. And so I'm spending this constant battle of going, hey, don't be the dog. Don't be the dog. Don't be the dog. And I want to give you a solution about how to do that because we will all open that door to folly. We'll all mess up. We'll all stray. We'll all make the mistake but the mistake isn't permanent and it isn't fatal, right? It says here, in, and I'll go back a scripture in 18, it said, little do they know that the dead live there. In other words, the dead live in the, in the arena of folly. The dead live in the area of, of stolen waters and, and things that are done in secret. And it says her guests are in the depths of the grave. Guests, ones that stay there, don't stay there, Right? And if you don't stay there and you leave, but you keep going back, keep fighting. Keep fighting. There's nothing better than you struggling to stay out of the grips of Lady Folly. There's nothing better than you fighting back against a spiritual enemy that's trying to hold you back and pull you back and pull you back. Amen? See, here's the, here's the big problem with what we've done over time in church is we've shamed people for making a mistake. I'm saying it's fine. We're all making mistakes. Some of us just get caught more than others. The deal is, is you got to fight your way out of your mistakes. You got to get back up. You got to decide, I'm not going to be the dog. I'm not going to keep going back. I'm not going to keep going back. I'm going to allow God to rescue me from this thing, right? Amen? So making the mistake, opening the wrong door isn't permanent. You got to fight your way out. Turn around the same door. The scriptures talk about how a, a door swings on its hinges like a lazy person turns over in their bed, right? It's just swinging in and out. And, and it, as it swings in, it swings out. Get up, get out of the door. And if you find yourself like the dog, amen, there's some people been been around the block a few times. If you find yourself going back, like, you got to realize, I'm not going to stay in my foolishness. I'm not going to stay in my foolishness. I'm not going to tell you exactly how in your situation that applies, but I'm going to give you the antidote to all this. Amen. Here's, here's where we're going to close on the scripture. Romans 12, 2 says this. It says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into the new person into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Think about this now. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. What are the customs of this world as it has to do with this? The customs of this world say that you are defined by what you do. So if you make a mistake, They'll say, you are a whatever. If you steal, you are a thief. If you uh, murder, you are a murderer. If you are a, you know, if you're always negative, you are a pessimist. And the world will label you and keep you right where your mistake is. 
So the scripture saying, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. The world system is designed uh, to keep you out of God's system. The world's customs are designed to let you understand God's customs. But so it says, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Well, how can I think then? How can God help me think my way out of this thing? God, first of all, it's submission. It's submission to God's will. It's understanding that God will fight for you. We sang the song this morning. He's going to knock down walls. He's going he's to rip down lies. He's going to tear down barriers. He's coming for you so that you don't have to stay in the house of folly. He's staying after you. He's staying after me so that we don't have to live there. And, and then what? When we listen to his voice, when we go after him, we respond like Aaron said and turn towards him. Then we're able to hear what? Perfect wisdom comes from, from God, right? We're able to hear instruction. We're able to hear what is it that God wants me to hear. And if I listen, if I train myself to quit, be quick to listen and obey, then the next thing you know, my mind is being transformed. And I'm not quick to hear the voice of folly, the invitation. When the Lord says, stolen waters aren't sweet. Okay, I don't care what my taste buds say. I know that he says they're not, so they're not. Does that make sense? He's saying, well, what's done is secret is going to be what? Brought to light. So there's nothing secret. I'm crazy to think that what I do in secret is going to stay a secret. Crazy. So I have to listen to what he's saying. And I can say, listen, listen, Lady Folly. Listen, my man at the, at, at the uh, laundromat. I don't need that. I don't need that. Yeah, it's going to be cheaper. Yeah, it's going to be easier. But sure enough, it's going to cause me problems. Either you're a cop trying to trick me or there's one outside watching or a newspaper or somebody on Facebook saying, oh, look, Pastor Ken's at the laundromat. <laughs> you know, it ain't going to work for me. God, don't give me no. I've used up all my slack. God, I can't get away with nothing. So I know it. The Lord has trained me. He showed me. You, you used it all up when you were young, buddy. No, you, no more secrets with you. So here we are, walking down the street, headed towards the open door that God has for us. We're going to be offered another door. We're going to be offered a distraction. We're going to be offered something that is less than what God wants for us. I don't want you to open that other door. I don't want you to get distracted by folly. I don't want you to enter into the house and to be fooled and to be in the company of those that are in the depths of the grave, the dead. There's life in God's door. There's death in the enemy's door. And so for you and I to reach what God wants us to reach, we have to know and be wise and realize that, that, that with every open door, with every opportunity comes a distraction. With every opportunity comes another opportunity that's a counterfeit. And for us to be wise, we need to know a couple things. One, the Lord is never going to lead us into theft or deception. Never. He's always, always, always going to hold true to his word. He's always going to invite you into life and not to death. And so if you find any of those things as you're looking in that door, turn around and run. Get out of there. Don't let it distract you no matter how good it looks. Amen? Allow the Lord to transform our minds, change the way we think. Just pray to him, Lord, change the way I think. Show me the right way to think. Help me see the way that you want me to see. Amen? Would you stand with me? Oh, man. Feels good to be headed towards God's open doors. Feels better to know I don't have to fall for the counterfeit one. If you're here this morning, if you're joining us online, and you've never received Jesus as your Savior, it's really this simple. Jesus saw that we were bound in sin. He came to earth, born to a virgin as a baby. He grew up, and when he was around 30, he started his ministry. He showed us that he was the Son of God. Ultimately, he went to a cross and was sacrificed 
shed his blood to cover our sin because God always demanded blood for sin. So he sent a perfect sacrifice, his son, that was able to pay for all your sin and my sins so that we don't have to live in it anymore. I know that sounds probably crazy if you've never heard it before, but it's true. You don't have to know Jesus to know the weight of sin. You don't have to know about sacrifice to know what it means to have sin ripping you to pieces day in and day out. The good news about all this is, is that Jesus made a way that you don't have to deal with that because he dealt with it. You and I can't. So if you're here this morning and you want to receive his forgiveness, you want to receive his new life, receive your place in eternity, then I want you to pray out loud with me, whether you're here or online. Just pray this prayer. This is from the desire of your heart. Lord, I've sinned. I've fallen short. I've made mistakes. I can't pay for my sin. I accept you as my savior. I'm letting you pay for my sin. I'm letting you have my heart and my life. I'm trusting you to show me what all this means. Fill me with your spirit. You are my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Listen, if you prayed that prayer, uh, if you're online, there's a link on there that you can let us know. It's called a connection card. If you're here, there's great cards in the seat backs. Don't leave without grabbing one, filling it out. There's a little block on there that says, I receive Christ as my Savior today. Listen, there's nothing better than being born again. There's nothing better than being, being uh, in right standing with God. Nothing better. And so if you made that decision, I celebrate it with you. Good news. Hey, we had a young lady get saved in Growth Track last week. That's awesome. How about that? That's awesome. You know? So God's doing his work. God's, God's, God's doing his work, still increasing his kingdom and breathing life into his people. Whether you're just saved, whether, whether you have been, God wants to give you life and give it to you abundantly. I thank you guys for being here. Father, I pray a blessing over all your people. Lord, I pray that as they go, they'll prosper, God, that they'll have wisdom and that they'll have understanding in everything that they do, that they'll stay away from Lady Folly and all her, all her invitation. Lord, I pray that you'll bless them coming in and going out. God, that you'll look upon them with favor in everything that they do. Set them up for success as they pursue you and your kingdom. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here.